Welcome to Model Steam Engines for Beginners. This is number three, and it's called The Trouble with Steam Engines. In this episode, I'm going to attempt to show you how to get yourself out of trouble with a steam engine. Many years ago, when I was much younger than today, I used to build and run these things. This is a 7.25 inch gauge Stania Black 5. I bought it part finished and finished it off. And it was a beautiful model. Very, very powerful and very heavy too. Very difficult to move about. These days I play with more modest steam engines. I have a 7.25 inch gauge line around my garden, but that's really disused now, I don't run it very much. The model steam engines that I currently build and work on are much simpler than this Black 5. This is an engine I've been working on recently. It's a Stuart Turner 5A, and I've just added the reversing gear to it. As you can see, there are many moving parts, not quite as many as on a locomotive, but still a lot of moving parts. When you make these parts, and when you fit these parts, you need to treat every individual part as a model in its own right. If any part of the engine is not right, for instance, the crankshaft, if the crankshaft isn't true, and is difficult to turn, the rest of the engine will never be right. And you will compound the problems and end up with an engine that sounds like a pneumatic drill when it's running. This engine is a very old Stuart S50 and it's got some play in the main bearings and some play in the big ends. But by carefully adjusting the valve timing for early admission, as mentioned in another video of this series, it cushions the blow to the piston and the engine doesn't rattle so much. It really needs the bearings bushing. The problem being that with an S50, even though it looks like it's got proper plumber blocks and proper bearings, these are simply solid cast iron. But the original builder of this engine machined off the cast iron bolts and fitted proper bolts. I think if I'd have been doing it, I would have split the bearing at the same time. But anyway, to fix this, it just needs phosphor bronze bushes fitting and maybe a crank pin too. I'm not going to really bother with this, it's such a small engine and it runs okay for what it is. Most of these end up on a shelf anyway as a display item. The point of showing this is to illustrate how important it is to have a crankshaft, a crank web and a flywheel sat in bearings that are perfectly parallel and a good fit to the crankshaft. Some Stuart engines, such as the Victoria, the James Coombs and the Beam engine, use a system whereby one end of the crankshaft is supported on the main bed casting and the other end is supported on a pedestal. And before you go any further, it's essential to make sure that the pedestal and the bed casting are in perfect alignment. Rather than build the engine loose on the bench, it's a good idea to bolt the thing down. And before you make any other parts for the engine, make sure that this crankshaft spins and feels really good when you turn it. If the crankshaft is out of alignment, things like this, the eccentrics and the water pump drive, not to mention the connecting rod big end, will all be out of alignment and the engine will not run properly. Like all steam engines it will turn over but it won't sound too good. And it will of course wear in after a while and stop clunking quite as badly. But this is not really what engineering is about. So whether you're building an engine from scratch or repairing one, build it in modular form. Start from the bottom up. Remember if the crankshaft isn't right, no other part of the engine will be right either. If you've been watching my other videos, of these engines and others running, you'll see that they run fairly quietly. Not all of them are new, some of them are quite old, but I always take my time to get the separate components to run in harmony with each other. I'm not an engineer by the way, I'm a musician, and I've had no formal training in lathe operating, milling machine operating, or anything to do with mechanical engineering. But what I do have is a great deal of common sense. When you're working on a steam engine on the bench, try and blank off the exhaust with a filter. This is a piece of rag with some rubber cord around it. This stops the oil from getting into the atmosphere and you subsequently breathing it in. Another good thing to do, that isn't shown on many of the drawings, is always drill a hole in the bottom of the eccentric. This allows an Allen key to go into the eccentric sheave and it's much easier to adjust the eccentric. Assuming of course that you're using eccentric sheaves that have a grub screw somewhere in the sheave holding it to the crankshaft. The other option is that you have to take the eccentrics off to make adjustments and after a while you'll slip into a coma doing this. Even simple Stevenson's link valve gear always surprises me how well it works and the fact that you can bang it into reverse straight away whilst the engine's still under power. It really is essential to make sure that nothing binds on the expansion link. The expansion link is the oval shaped thing in the middle. 
if the valve fork binds on the expansion link. When you move the lever across, you're likely to smash the expansion link. I've done this a few times in the past, so I know what I'm speaking about. Valve gear has to be made accurately, including the operating lever. This must remain at a fixed 90 degrees. It must not flop about on the shaft. If it does move, then it will wear the expansion link unduly, and also the valve events will not be correct, so you'll never get a good forward and reverse setting. Always cross drill them and fit a taper pin. On some engines the valve events are complex, on others simple. On the James Coombs engine, the beam engine and a Victoria engine, the valve linkage to the slide valve in the steam chest is very complicated. So make sure if you're building one of these engines that your engineering tolerances are pretty good. They don't want to come loose and they don't want to flop about. What you're watching on the video at the moment is the bottom end of a James Coombs engine running at an unfeasibly fast speed. This is not recommended because it will prematurely wear the engine, but it's something I always do when I've done work on an engine to make sure that everything's tight and nothing goes wrong. If you can run an engine at this speed, it's going to run even better at a slower speed and you can be confident that it works. This is a Stuart Beam engine running at a more realistic speed. The Beam engine and the James Coombs engine use the same flywheel, the same eccentric and the same crank web. And what they also have in common is that if any of these components are not made right, the engine sounds like a pneumatic drill and knocks all the time. And it's usually just crankshaft alignment, which prematurely wears the big end, and then it's a catch-22. One thing leads to another and it just gets worse. What you need to achieve is a machine running in perfect harmony with itself. Provided that the components are accurately machined, fitting the parts together is an art in itself. And fitting can be a frustrating or a very rewarding experience depending on which way you go about it. Some model steam engines are never run on steam. Most of them run on compressed air. I always run them on steam after all they are steam engines. And here you see a selection of problems, mainly leaks. To cure leaks there are simple rules to follow. Use gaskets between mating surfaces. Do not just use sealing compound. Do not use silicone rubber. Use a simple gasket. They've been around for years and they work. Make sure that all the mating metal surfaces are well finished. It's going to be difficult to seal even with a gasket if the mating surface is very uneven and rough or not machined properly. This is an engine I built about 30 years ago. A Stuart Victoria. And it still doesn't leak after all these years apart from the odd drip from the valve packing that needs replacing because it's old. And finally, never ever over tighten any of the nuts or bolts holding the steam chest cover onto the steam chest or the cylinder head onto the cylinder. You will shear them off and then you will have a problem. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.